Today we're going to talk about getting a decent first starting tune on a 5th gen platform. Virtual torque is a pain in the butt. Stick around. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and we are in the Superado. It has been turned back to normally aspirated and obviously I don't have any tunes that this thing will run on. It is at, it's running right now, but I've got the data logger running here, but let's talk about kind of the initial setup. And this is a good step to go through anytime that you might do multiple modifications at once and need to get started at a baseline level tune because the biggest thing about these fit gens is the virtual torque stuff and it's all calculated from like your VVE tables and that's why it's very critical to get VVE dialed in as soon as possible. Generally we focus on the math first. On fifth gens, we're probably going to want to focus on SD first and then go back to the math, and then we'll have to go back to SD again after that. But basic setup that we've got going on here is our tuning setup where we have our O2 sensors disabled. We're in open loop on here. You can see that our readiness voltage, I've negated that, and then I went ahead and set our fuel trims even though technically we don't need to. Temperature control, our cat's over temps off, and then our DFCO has been disabled. Standard right there. Uh, as far as underneath airflow, I haven't changed the dynamics, but we do have the mass airflow uh, sensor failed. So we're not running off of mass airflow. And in fact, if we go back, you'll notice we are in air calc mode normal. And then last but not least, we're going to go in mass airflow sensor. We're going to fail high at 2 hertz, fail low at 1 hertz, and then make sure go down to your P0103 DTC and change it to mil on first air. Listen, you've got to have that check engine light or else it doesn't work. If you, that check engine light's not showing up, it's still using the mass airflow. So you can see that even though we're uh, failed right now we are getting hertz readings off the mass airflow so once that DTC is set that means that the mass airflow sensor is out of there and in fact in this situation I couldn't get the thing running long enough to fail the mass airflow sensor so I just unplugged it fired it once that put it in a fail mode and I could plug it back in so I could get my IAT sensor back in the loop now what do we do after that well we got to kind of ballpark the VE table in to get everything started up Whenever you're doing something like a cam, one of the big things that we need to do right off the bat is go into our airflow general and adjust our cranking VE. We have less volumetric efficiency with a big cam because we lose power down around idle. We lose torque, things like that. And that's what really throws the wrench into things on the fifth gen platforms that doesn't really bother the third gens and the fourth gens as much. So we go in, we lower this down. I like to start at about 80%. Uh, and if you have a VE table that for some reason is not maxed out at 100 on a fifth gen platform, let me know down in the comments. I believe all of them start at 100%. We lower this down to 80%, try and get it fired up from there. And that's kind of the basis for the tune that we load in. We get that ready to go, and then what we want to do is go ahead and key everything on, get your wide band reading up so you can at least see the gauge. We're not worried about logging so much as just being able to watch our wide band gauge and see what happens whenever we try to crank. It may not fire off the first time, but we should get an indication whether or not it's super rich are super lean. Remember during cranking though and the initial run in on most situations, especially whenever it's cold, it's going to be commanding rich as part of the startup. So it's not crazy to see it commanding 0 0.8, 0 0.85, 0 0.9 during cranking. But if you're showing 0.7 on your wide band while trying to start the thing, you're too rich. And we can quickly solve that by going into the VVE table. And what we want to do in that situation let me get it open here, is we want to select the entire table and take it down 10%. So we can do 0.9 in our box up here, multiply that, that takes 10% out of the entire table, calculate it, 
copy it over to the open tab, the manifold switch open tab, and that takes 10% out. Try that again until you get to a point where the thing fires up and idles. Even if you have to give it a little bit of pedal to get it up and idling, get it to the point like we are right now where it's idling. And then what I like to do is come in to the scanner here and you can see we're collecting data. And there's a couple things that are indications that our uh, virtual torque is off obviously because our airflow uh, calculations are off. One of them is our timing is bouncing into the negatives. Whenever we get all that stuff dialed out as we go through this process, we should expect to see that you know between 10 and 20 degrees positive, never going into the negatives uh, to maintain idle. The other side of it is, is we're idling about 750 to 800. The idle on this is set to 900. And so we're idling lower than our target. We're idling good, we're just idling lower than our target. So now that we're collecting data, here's kind of like what I like to do. I'm just sitting here parked in the driveway. I'm gonna go into our vehicle controls and special functions and I'm gonna go into our idle tab here, and I'm gonna use idle control to kind of scrub through. And we'll start at uh, 950, because we're already targeting 900. If we put 900 in there, nothing's gonna change, and then we'll turn it on. So, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna watch my graph over here, and I'm gonna step up my idle about 50 at a time. Haven't peeked over yet so let's go up to there we go 1070 1100 should get us closer we'll give it a second to kind of smooth out here let's go to 1150 and what i'm there we go now we're breaking over into the thousand rpm range of our ve air graph i'll let it collect data there for a minute or two and then we'll keep on going up. There, now we're getting a lot more data in that 1,000 RPM range. Now, something to keep in mind if we go back over to the tune, take a look at underneath idle, we have a maximum set point, and it looks like stock in this situation is 900. I've moved it up to 2200. You have to move that up in order for this idle uh, adjustment in the scanner to work properly. So be aware of that. Just checking pressures, temperatures, make sure everything looks good there. And let's go up another 50. See if we get into that 1100 range. Not really, so let's take it up to 1300. There we go. Now we're in the 1200s. Collect data here for a bit. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this off and see if it'll catch the idle. It may dip out to the point of actually killing the truck here. Okay, it caught it pretty decently. Not bad. Not bad. And so I'm going to do that again. We're going to take it up to 1300. I'm going to turn it off. And basically what I'm wanting to do by, by cycling this a couple times is to get multiple data hits, specifically where we're seeing this little rich spike in there because it doesn't really jive with some of the other stuff that we've seen on here. So, But every time we do it, it keeps happening, so it probably is. And this is one of the fun things about virtual volumetric efficiency is since it's all math-based, it is a pain in the butt sometimes to get these tables smoothed out. Essentially what we're going to be looking for on this is to bring this down 2% and bring this up 2 or 3%. 2% would be ideal. And so it might be a balancing act to try and get those two rows and cells. If we can't do that, we'll end up going in and then doing rezoning. I've got videos on all this stuff out there. By the way, go over to tuning101.com. That takes you right to our YouTube homepage. Click on that link and then there will be playlists. You can go into the fifth gen playlist where we talk about mass airflow tuning, volumetric efficiency tuning, virtual torque tuning, all that stuff is kind of cohesive. Then on top of it, go check out HP Academy if you're looking for something that's more of a structured course. There's links to all this down in the description. Okay, so let's go ahead and disconnect now. We'll copy over our graph 
and we're going to go into our virtual volumetric efficiency and let's we're going to go ahead and paste special by half because the numbers are pretty small if all the numbers were red maybe we would go ahead and paste by a full percentage or if all the numbers were green we could paste by full percentage but since we have green and red we're going to paste by half to try and bring this error closer together in there now that we've got our adjusted date in there we're going to look for points right outside that's actually a pretty smooth transition on both of those here we've got a 1281 to a 1275 that's not ideal because we're going from a higher number to a lower number so i'm going to extrapolate this down a bit we'll use the interpolation same idea here we're at 1219 so i'm going to go all the way down to 1231 to make sure that the numbers go up 1151 117 so i'm going to go down to this 1190 it's going to shift all of our numbers up down below that and then 1020 we can go down just a little bit here and here in this row it'll go ahead and fill it in but if we go over and look at our view here pretty smooth ignore this we're going this is a stock ve table that i loaded in here and so we're only worried about one bar all the two bar stuff out there at the edge of it i just didn't change it because i'm still running off my two bar uh graph error graph on there doesn't really matter because we're never as i said going to go above one because we're not normally aspirated and so instead of changing the graph and changing this we're just running off the same thing but let's go ahead and calculate we'll see all the zones that it affects not bad let's check our boundaries here we got a 1015 to 1146 that's a little bit of a step so i'm going to go ahead and grab about this many rows and i'm going to interpolate this way recalculate to shift those rows smooth that out a little bit now we've got a 1051 to a 1088 etc we'll go ahead and copy this paste it into our open table calculate that one and we will save it let's make sure that we're disconnected here we are and we'll shut the truck off and we'll go ahead and get this loaded in okay we got the new tone loaded in what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go ahead to key to the on position go over to the scanner i'm going to connect up and start logging just remember that our wideband readings right now are going to be bad because we've got air in the exhaust pipe but what we're looking for is the initial start up here okay a little rough but it started on its own we're looking at our data here showing that we're pretty rich compared to what we're commanding and now it's kind of settling down so i'm going to stop this scan and now that's settled down i'm going to start logging again and now our idles came up a little bit because we're getting the airflow closer to what it actually is and so our idles trying to get closer to our commanded and our timing's a little bit higher also so as we correct our airflow we're correcting the virtual torque and that means that we may have to go in and tweak the virtual torque every once in a while but honestly we shouldn't need to as long as we get our airflow dialed in because that torque is pretty accurate the only problem that we run into is that the virtual torque tra uh, trails off whenever we start making more power and so it might be low in the higher ranges and things like that but this is a pretty good improvement over the last one you can see where we are transitioning from rich to lean there we've got a nice uh, transition line that shows that the shape where the shape was all one way this way we've kind of moved it down and put a little bit of a slope on it now but with our zero being right here instead of being you know above or below our zero now we're crossing over our zero which means we're getting closer and we can inch in towards our target goals here i'm going to go through the steps with the idle one more time here let's go ahead and bump this thing up to about uh 1100 and it's going to want a little bit more so we'll take it up to 12. let it populate some data here and 
Now we'll go back up to 1300. And the nice thing about it is even though we're off, we have a smooth air graph. We're not seeing giant spikes from one cell to the next. Most of these cells are within 2% of each other. That's ideal. If we have giant spikes, that's an indication that maybe we have a mechanical issue that's causing some weird stuff, or we're just collecting bad data. We're getting some transient data in there, stuff like that, and we want to kind of smooth over that or filter over that data so we're not using that. Let's go ahead and turn our idle control off and see how it responds. A lot better. A lot better on turning off our idle control. We'll turn it back on up to 1300, let it rev up. much better catches the rpms a lot better so i would go ahead we're going to copy this over like we just did the previous one and now it's time to try and go for a drive and in fact we can go ahead and try and manually bring our rpms up let's see if we can get up to about 2000 here give us an indication of what driving may be and it's struggling there yep so we still have some issues on tipping but we're on the right path as far as getting our data dialed in as always, I want to say thanks for stopping by the garage. Remember, ABT, always be tuning.